Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Sadu, and today we're going to be chatting about joint pain. So there are three primary things to consider when we're looking at joint pain. The first is physical trauma in a sense, which sounds kind of extreme, but what I'm referring to is essentially funky movement patterns. Number two is a scaling issue. So basically doing too much too quickly. So for example, going from say zero workouts per week to five all of a sudden out of the blue, that is absolutely going to backfire. And thirdly, and most importantly for the vast majority of folks in my opinion is nutrition, which might surprise you because what the hell would your food intake have to do with joint pain? But we will get into it. So first up, We're going to address the physical trauma piece, which is fairly straightforward. So there are ways in which your joints prefer to move, and there are ways in which your joints prefer not to move. So for example, if you dislocate your shoulder, obviously your shoulder isn't going to like that. Of course, there's interplay between joints, muscles, tendons, ligaments, all that good stuff. However, we're focusing on joint pain specifically here. So this is how I'd recommend protecting your joints from a physical movement standpoint. Get someone to teach you how to move properly. So in the case of working out, you're much more likely to experience joint issues if you're moving improperly and putting your body in all sorts of funky positions in the gym under load versus learning how to execute all of the exercises well. You're also going to get better results by doing this because you'll be using what you want to be using. So in the case of working out, you want to be stimulating your muscles. You don't want to be loading your joints up to the max and stressing them in an injury prone way. So for example, if you go to the gym and load up the squat bar and do say three to four sets and think, oh man, my legs are gonna be so sore tomorrow, and the next day rolls around and you don't even feel any soreness in your quad muscles, your hamstrings or your glutes. However, your knees are super achy and your hips just kind of feel generally stiff. You definitely want to invest in someone who can teach you how to squat because your muscles weren't sore and your joints were. Similarly, if you do a bunch of sets of bench press and the next day your chest isn't even sore but your shoulders and your elbows just hurt, you need to learn how to perform chest exercises properly. So the first way to protect yourself from joint pain is simply by moving well and targeting what you want to target in the gym via proper movement patterns. Second up, we've got scaling. So it's really important that you scale up activity slowly. If you're not working out at all, don't jump to four, five, or six workouts per week. Start at say two, maybe three, and slowly scale up from there. The same thing applies to playing sports or things like running. Don't go from zero to hero because you need to give your body time to adapt to that new stressor. If you don't, it's not a matter of if you'll get injured, it's when. And I know it can be tempting to jump into things because you may be feeling super motivated and you'd like to get a certain result quicker. However, if you take a step back and look at the big picture, you're going to make faster and better progress overall if you scale up your activity properly because you won't be nursing injuries and needing to take time off. Now there also can be repetitive motion difficulties that pop up. So an extreme example of this would be a pitcher in baseball. They are probably going to have shoulder issues simply because they're using all the structures of the shoulder literally as their job. So if we extrapolate that out to a regular person that stays active, You don't want to do the same motions or the same exercises in the gym over and over and over just because you can run into issues this way. So you might even be moving properly, but if you do the same movements too frequently without enough variability, you may run into issues as well. So let's take another gym example. You probably don't want a barbell squat with the same stance for a year straight. So be sure to implement some variety in that maybe you barbell squat for two to three months and then your primary lower body movement is the leg press for a couple months and then it's a deadlift variation and so on. Just so you can avoid some of those repetitive motion nagging injuries that potentially may pop up. Okay, now we're on to the diet piece. I find this aspect fascinating because it's not nearly as intuitive as what we just addressed in regards to the gym or activity related aspects of joint pain. So diet is key when it comes to joint health because 
joint pain is inflammation. And if we look at arthritis, which is actually an autoimmune condition, we see massive improvements of arthritic symptoms in folks who lower inflammation via their diets. An autoimmune condition in a nutshell is when your body isn't able to differentiate between healthy cells and unhealthy cells. So your immune system ends up attacking them both. For example, let's take MS, so multiple sclerosis. When you eat something that you don't tolerate from a digestive standpoint, it ramps up inflammation in the body and then the immune system gets deployed because it needs to put that fire out. The problem in the case of an autoimmune condition is that when the immune system is dealing with inflammation via a funky diet, it's not able to differentiate between the healthy cells and the unhealthy cells, so it attacks them both. In the specific case of MS, it attacks the nerves in the body. In the case of diabetes, it attacks the cells of the pancreas. In the case of arthritis, it attacks the joints. Now, if someone has been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis specifically, which typically impacts the wrists and the hands, what they eat plays a massive role in how much inflammation is in their body and therefore how much pain is in their hands and wrists. So let's say this individual with rheumatoid arthritis is sensitive to gluten. Let's use gluten. Every time they eat gluten-containing foods, they're going to ramp up inflammation in their body, and then their immune system is going to essentially target the wrists and hands, which is experienced as swollen and painful joints. Now, an autoimmune condition is a fairly extreme example, but everyone likely has a nutrition and joint pain interplay or connection to one degree or another. So I'll use myself as an example. When I eat foods I don't tolerate, I notice swelling, pain, and inflammation in my knees. That's where I personally notice that inflammatory response via my immune system. You might notice it in your feet or your low back or your shoulders or maybe even all of the above. So what this means is that if you're experiencing joint pain, yes, you should look at the physical aspects via exercise, movement patterns, scaling, etc. However, the component that most folks miss is the dietary one, and it's extremely powerful because when you're eating foods that you don't tolerate, you're essentially telling your immune system to attack or start to deteriorate a specific part of your body. Now, if I were to explain the inflammatory response of eating foods that you don't digest well in blunt physical terms, just think about it like a rolled ankle. When you step off of a curb and roll your ankle, it swells up like crazy because that's a part of the immune system's response to healing your ankle. It's also painful, right? And it takes time to clean up that mess. The same thing applies to joint pain, except the input isn't stepping off the curb in this instance and rolling your ankle. The input is funky foods that your body doesn't digest and tolerate in your diet. So you might be wondering, how do you know if you're tolerating the foods that you're eating or not? Digestion is going to let you know. So if you're getting bloated after meals, your body is letting you know that you gave it something that it didn't like. If your bowel movements are irregular, so maybe you're going too frequently or not enough, that's a sign that you ate a food or foods that your body didn't like. General inflammation in your face, hands, feet, ankles will also let you know. So for example, if you go out for a pizza on a Friday night and after you eat it, you feel bloated and then in the next morning you wake up and it looks like you got punched in the face because it's so puffy and inflamed, that is your body telling you it didn't like something in that pizza meal. Your skin is also an amazing marker of digestion status because the default state of your skin is clear and glowing. I've had so many clients mention to me that other folks have commented on how great their skin looks after being on program for a bit. Reason being, we get their digestion on track and as a result, their skin clears right up because things are now as they should be. Now I'll mention the skin is an inside out process, not an outside in process. Meaning a lot of folks are looking for the next great skincare product where really what they should be doing is cleaning up their diet. So now we're at the practical implementation piece. What do you do? How do we put this stuff into action? On the physical front, Challenge your joints via exercise because it'll strengthen them. However, be sure that you're moving properly and if something really hurts your joints or just doesn't feel right, you may need to tweak some things and if you don't know how to make those tweaks, invest in someone who can teach you how to. 
Also make sure you scale up appropriately. So don't go from zero workouts per week all of a sudden to five or running zero kilometers on a weekly basis to 100. You will get injured. So give your body time to adapt and increase your workout volume slowly. Dietarily favor single and minimal ingredient whole foods and really prioritize your digestion. So if you're eating things that are bloating you and causing water retention, those things are likely going to lead to joint pain as well. So eat foods that you tolerate and digest super well and skip the ones that you don't. You'll also just feel way better if you do this because your immune system needs to buffer those funky foods, which takes energy. So eating foods that you do digest really well will increase your energy levels because things will be running smoothly and your immune system won't be working overtime to clean up the mess that is your diet. Also, as an added bonus, you're going to get sick far less often because the immune system only has so many resources. So when they're not being used up to deal with funky digestion and inflammation, that immune capacity is then able to handle any potential pathogens or viruses as it should, meaning you get sick less. Now, I haven't even mentioned anything about weight loss yet. Losing weight is absolutely going to be more joint friendly because loading your muscles and bones via weight training and exercise is one thing. However, simply carrying around a bunch of unnecessary fat tissue isn't going to support the integrity of your joints. So by reducing your inflammation via better food choices, fortunately, you should lose weight as a byproduct as well. Staying hydrated will also likely make your joints feel better and eating things like bone broths and chowing down on the cartilage when you're eating a chicken bone, for example, can help with joint integrity too. But adding in bone broths and all these, you know, collagen powders and supplements, etc., on top of a poor diet is missing the forest for the trees. So prioritize what you're actually eating before you start to get all fancy with supplements and things like that. Now, if you're keen to learn more about this whole inflammation topic, I'd recommend listening to episode 108 titled Inflammation Explained because it goes into the whole inflammatory process and how the immune system functions as well as how to keep it nice and strong. If you're interested in applying for one-on-one -on -one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and feel free to friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sadu. Also, if you think you know someone who may benefit from this information, please do share this episode around. It helps the podcast grow and we can get more information, helpful information out to more and more folks. Lastly, be sure to hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you're using. Thanks for tuning in and I will catch you on the next episode. See ya.